In this video I'm going to go over how to strip, sand, seal, and revarnish the cabin sole floor. This is the floors before. You can see that they have some UV damage and where some moisture has also gotten underneath it. This is the back side and you can see where it started to bubble on the edges and you know you can see the water damage and stuff like that. These are the steps and we're going to be redoing these steps as well. It has the same kind of damage, mostly UV, scratches, and peeling. First thing we're going to do is use a heat gun and we need to heat up the varnish till it's hot. You don't want to burn it so you need to be very careful with your heat gun and not get it too close. You want to heat it up just enough to where it's soft and your scraper can just pull it straight off of the board. There are some places on it you're going to find that are going to be much harder. You're going to heat up a little bit more, but still, in this, at the same time, be very careful not to overheat your board and burn it in the spots that you have the heat gun. The best thing to do is just keep a good distance with it and just heat it up until it starts to come off with the scraper. This is the back side of one of the panels completely stripped of the varnish. It has not been sanded yet. It's just been stripped and wiped off. Then the front side looks like this. You can see I've got one little section at the bottom scraped off completely and then working on the rest. Once you've got the board completely stripped top and bottom side, you're going to need to sand it. And to sand, I start by hand just to make sure I don't go through the veneer. That's if it's a veneered board. This one is a veneer board and it is very thin veneer so I needed to start by hand just to make sure that I wasn't going to go through the veneer. If you notice that your veneer is a lot thicker then you can use a sander, electric, any type of electric sander pretty much works or it'll just work a little bit better and then sand your boards down. Um, you're going to want to get it to about a 220 to 320 grit and that way your varnish will have something to grip to when you, when you start your varnish work. Now for the fun stuff. The first thing you're going to need to do is clean your boards up really well. Once your boards get cleaned up really well, you need to bring them in and you need to make sure you're in a place that does not have a lot of dust. Do as much as you can to keep the dust from settling on your boards. Uh, I closed up all my hatches in the boat and I had one hatch open and believe me it was hot and you don't want to work in there too long especially with the fumes but it's worth it to try to keep the dust off of your project. A lot of people think that you end up getting bubbles on here but it's rare that varnish actually has bubbles. It's usually dust when you think it's a bubble. So what I'm going to use is a medium bristle brush and the reason I want to use a medium bristle and not a, not a soft bristle is because I need it to actually dig into the wood a little bit. It needs to be hard enough to push the varnish around into all of the grain. Before you start anything, make sure you use a non-shedding rag coated with mineral spirits to wipe down the whole board. Go from one end of the board to the other end of the board just to make sure that you've, got, you've removed all of the dust or any other particles that may still be sitting on the floor. And from there, what I'm going to do is use a mixture of 25% varnish to 75% mineral spirits. Now I'm using the 25% varnish ratio because I need it to soak into the grain of the wood rather than sit on top, which is what would happen if I just used straight varnish. So it wouldn't have a good bond to the actual wood. Now I'm using clear varnish to start. This will actually be finished up with a uh, satin finish or a rubbed finish look. So I'm going to use longest strokes that I can possibly use on this but also ensuring at the same time that I'm getting all of the board and not leaving out any little spots. And it's very easy to leave out spots. So just make sure you're kind of looking at different angles to make sure you're going over all of the spots that you might, might possibly be leaving out. Uh, again, uh, do long strokes with it and get the edges of the board and watch out for runs. Always go back over and make sure you're not getting any runs on the edges where it can squeegee the varnish out from the brush. Don't use an extensive amount of varnish, but coat the board well. Once you've got your floor, steps, whatever your project is coated in your first sealing coat, 
you're going to need to clean up and wait for it to dry before you can put your next coats on. I use diesel for my brushes to store them in. It has a good consistency and it allows for the brush to not harden or anything like that, which is very common for most brushes. If you just leave them or clean them and leave them, they still get hard. Well, I let them sit in the diesel and then I obviously clean it out in mineral spirits before I use it again. But it tends to keep my brushes perfect for the next use and it doesn't coagulate or anything like that. Just hang the brush in the container where the actual tip of the brush is off of the bottom of the container, probably about a half inch. And that will keep any actual coagulation that happens at the bottom of that container from clogging up your brush. Even if it does clog the brush or get in the brush, it's very easily cleaned out in this storage method. Once your varnish is cured, then you go back and hand sand again. Now we need something for the next coat of varnish to grip to, so we sand it down. Sand, trying mostly to sand, you know, peaks or anything like that that you can kind of see off and also roughing it up well enough so that it can grip. Then we're going to clean the board, mineral soaked rag, make sure it doesn't leave any lint or anything like that behind. My next coat's going to be 50% varnish and 50% mineral spirits. And then I apply everything the same exact way as I did before, making sure I'm getting in all of my edges and things like that. And one thing to keep in mind is go around your edges and check for drips or any overruns or anything like that. Go back over with the brush if you can, if you do see them. Then we're going to repeat the same process over again, except this time we're going to be using 75% varnish, 25% mineral spirits. Then we're going to repeat the process over again, and then we're going to be using full varnish, no mineral spirits, and do as many coats as what you believe that you need for your clear finish. I have about seven or eight coats on this one, and it looks like I can just about jump into the varnish and swim around. Now I've already put one coat of the rubbed finish varnish on here. So my next step after it's cured is repeat the process of sanding again. And I'm going to use a cotton rag and I'm going to wipe my board off completely. This is going to be my final coat. So I need to make sure that it is completely clean. And I'm going to use both types of rags. This is a non-shedding rag. It's coated with mineral spirits. And I'm going to wipe my board off from one end to the other. And then I'm going to start my varnishing. On this coat, I'm going to be extra careful about runs and drips and making sure that I'm coating the whole board. Now, with rubbed varnish or any satin finish or matte finishes, they dry very quickly. So you're going to want to work a little quicker and thin your product until the consistency that you're comfortable with. I thin this probably about 25%. That allows the coat to lie down and smooth out and gives me a little bit more working time with it. Finally, you should have a very rich, deep finish in your cabin sole floor, just like these. On to the steps. Now, in places that you can't get to, this applies to anything that you're working on, you can use a chemical stripper. It allows you to just put that on, wait for a little while, it'll dry, and then you can just either wash it out, brush it off, and it usually strips out pretty well. Then sand and repeat the same process as you did with the floor itself. Since the steps are solid wood, they're a little easier to work with sanding and you don't have to worry too much about sanding too far or anything like that. It's easier to fix damage. And these are the steps finished. I went ahead and went with the clear non-skid for the edge of the step instead of the black. I thought it looked a little better. If you liked the video, please leave a comment or any suggestions on anything that you might like to see for a how-to on a boat, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. And thank you very much for watching my video, and good luck with your project.